Hello and welcome to Yelaget USA. Today, we're hosting political journalist, activist, and documentary filmmaker, Vic Jarami. Hello and welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. So the first question is regarding your career as a journalist. I would like to know how did you decide to become a journalist and what challenges have you faced during your journey? Well, I think it was a natural um, attraction for me to um, deal with information in the world, uh, the sort of the muddy waters of information and bring some truth to it, bring stories, worthy stories of people and places and things and setting the record straight. Uh, it, was a, uh, it was an attraction for me. It's, it's part of it is just activism. You know, we, we Armenians have gone through so much uh, that's in our DNA to have to deal with lack of information or disinformation, especially since uh, the Armenian genocide, right? I mean, it's, it took us over a hundred years to get it recognized. So it's, it's all about, you know, truth and uh, contributing a little bit to the world and social cohesion. So speaking of this disinformation that got spread throughout Armenia, I would like to know what uh, effect has it um, done and what damage has it done to our uh, countries, uh, to our politics, uh, social life, and what should Armenia do to prevent or to stop this propaganda and disinformation going through? Good question. So, you know, our enemies, Azerbaijan and Turkey and, and others, spent decades and uh, almost unlimited resources and money uh, creating a false narrative, lying and uh, shaping the narrative throughout the world about uh, Artsakh and Armenia and such. And, uh, and we saw what happened when, when Azerbaijan invaded Artsakh and the consequent Artsakh genocide is that uh, so many people around the world either didn't know or they had uh, heard or read the propaganda that was handed to them by Azerbaijan. So it's extremely important for us uh, as Armenia, as Armenians, to be very proactive and to face this um, very aggressively because half the battle is the information war and make sure that any disinformation, lies, propaganda, defamation of Armenians, Armenia, our culture, our legacy is addressed and we do what we need to do to set the record straight. Thank you. So let's uh, move forward to your career and your activities that you currently do. And let's speak about your NGO and uh, what its mission, its um, activities and what have you done in, fr in the frame of this organization and what actions have been taken? Sure, so as soon as Artsakh was uh, invaded and we all sort of were horrified to watch this unfold uh, on social media, uh, but then further horrified of the lack of reaction from the international community, the deafening silence, uh, if you will, mm -hmm. and reading articles whenever there was one uh, with all the fallacies, the, the inaccuracies, the lazy journalism. And so we knew that Azerbaijan is feeding them a lot of propaganda. I mean, it's happening right now with Aliyev's absurd claims that Yerevan is part of Western Azerbaijan, whatever that is, right? I mean, the entire country is 33 years old. So it was very clear to me that there needs to be an organization that deals with all of the disinformation, defamation, lies, propaganda that is fed to not just media, but at the level of uh, public policy, intelligentsia, at uh, universities and such, academics, etc., cetera, um, and to fight for Armenians. So I, I founded the Truth and Accountability League, or TAL, which, is, uh, which does that. I mean, we have a multitude of programs, initiatives, and, and such where we, uh, we confront if we 
see something that needs to be addressed, it's addressed. Um, for example, uh, south of Los Angeles, there's a city called Irvine. The mayor had made uh, some disparaging comments about Armenians, very racist. We confronted this. Uh, we made her apologize. And then the city of Irvine um, invited me to screen my documentary film about Artsakh. Uh, and then after that, the city of Irvine, the city council voted to erect an Armenian genocide memorial in Irvine. So these are the things that we do. It's a process, but we have a lot of success stories. Of course, I made a, a documentary film called Motherland about the invasion of Artsakh um, that was in uh, 82 film festivals. We won 40 awards internationally. Um, I interviewed seven members of Congress for it and Baroness Cox and others. Just, it's a, it's a film for non-Armenians to really get the facts straight from the genesis and the history of Artsakh going back millennia to its place in the 20, 20th century, 21st century, and what happened, but also show the international community and their, uh, their lack of proper reaction, the role of the media, um, and, uh, you know, just showing the, the facts of what happened, the refugees, the eyewitnesses, the soldiers, and all of that. So, Atal does a lot of different things. Uh, we just finished doing these um, PSAs, public service announcements, uh, for LA County, which is a, you know, a very large Armenian community. It uh, encourages Armenians to call a government line, 211, and report any hate incident or hate crime that's done against Armenians. So um, what are your future plans uh, for your organization, for your career and uh, for Armenia in general? Do you plan to um, create another documentary or another program, something that uh, is ahead of you right I, now? I have a lot, but it's hard to do everything. Of course, I have another documentary in mind. Uh, right now, I'm, uh, my goal is to support quietly mm -hmm. the efforts of uh, the Armenian government um, with Tal and just continue to confront, there's so much disinformation out there, to continue to uh, set the record straight and to expand the organization and bring awareness to it so that people know about it and that we that we have enough resources and staff to uh, address everything that happens. For example, one of the things that I'm very sensitive about is uh, wording, right? Uh, I'm, always, I'm always correcting uh, newspapers and, and such and other editorials about the wording they use. If they say war, I say, or conflict, I say no. What happened in Artsakh in 2020 and three years later was not a conflict and it was not a war, it was a genocide. Let's get that straight. If multiple organizations have concluded that it was genocide and it meets many of the United Nations definitions of genocide, then it's genocide. Call it what it is, right? Um, I always say Artsakh is not an enclave. Artsakh is an independent republic that declared its independence from the USSR even before, not just Azerbaijan, but even before Armenia. Call it exactly what it is. I correct them on the fact that um, Artsakh has never been a part of a sovereign, independent Azerbaijan. So these are really important things because we need to shift the way people use these words, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like Nagorno-Karabakh. That's a Turkic and Russian word. It's Artsakh. So it's, it's really cleaning up a lot of fallacies out there and making sure that people are using the right terminology. 
And for the last question, I would like to ask you about your Armenian roots and what made you become so attached to Armenia and your roots and yeah. what made you like your homeland this much? I love, 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 love Armenia. I can't tell you, when I get off the plane and I'm going down the hallway to go get my luggage, it, it, this, the feeling that comes over me is euphoric. I can't even explain it. Uh, so when I was a kid, uh, starting at three years old, my parents brought me to Armenia. My mom was very, um, she was a patriot. So she um, really instilled that love of Armenia uh, in us. Uh, as I think I was telling you guys earlier, she read Havana's Tumanyan to me every, every night before I went to bed. Uh, my roots, so, uh, you know, you can take an Armenian out of Armenia. You can't take Armenia out of that person. Uh, my roots go back to 1604 to 1612 when then the king of Persia forcefully, inv well he invaded Akhijavan and he forcefully about, forced migrated about 300 Armenians to Iran and that's where my family mm -hmm. sort of went from uh, Nakhichevan to Iran. So we, generations of my family uh, was not born and raised in Armenia but our blood is Armenian and it's it's so fresh, you know what I mean? So um, this is this is my this is my privilege to be able to do my tiny, tiny, tiny little part for my motherland. Thank you so much for the interview. Thanks for having me.